So I've gone over how to unlock everything in this game, which you can find here, but I've only briefly discussed the economic hardship that is Yu-Gi-Oh! Ultimate Master World Champion Tournament 2006. So let's start with the basics. Upon winning a duel, you are presented with a variety of duel rewards. These rewards can be vaguely placed into seven categories and include a wide range of things such as the level of the opponent, how many fusion summons you perform, the amount of damage you've done, all the way to avoiding certain actions, making your opponent run out of cards, and special victories. While we only have a limited card pool to work with in the early game, there are a few rewards that stand out as both easy to get and provide a good payoff. You can earn 200 points for not special summoning monsters and an extra 100 points for not playing any trap cards. I personally like to start with the warrior deck and take out all the cards related to special summoning as well as all the trap cards and then work towards a general beatdown with equip strategy. Having an extra 300 with the potential to get max attack and max damage bonuses if you can stack multiple equips will make quite a difference when you're grinding to unlock duelists. As you accumulate wins and cards, you can start knocking out dual puzzles and some of the easier challenges for some extra money. Once you have your main deck situated, you can start to save up money to invest in an even better farm deck. Enter Last Turn OTK, a combo deck that relies on Wall of Revealing Light, Last Turn, and either Jalgen the Spiritualist or Jowls of Dark Demise in order to win the game instantly. Simply pulling off this combo gives you a ton of really good rewards, including win on an opponent's turn, low life points, no special summons, effect damage only for some reason, and an extra 1000 points for the last turn finish bonus. This will typically give you 2200 to 2500 DP per duel for just a couple minutes of gameplay but you also have the chance to just open the nuts and win in 30 seconds, as well as completely bricking and having to soft reset your way out of a loss. However, in order to make it truly efficient, the no ban list version of this deck is very consistent at assembling the combo on the first turn and winning before the opponent has a chance to do anything at all. So if you have no qualms about glitching the ban list out of existence, then I recommend this list which I use to play through the all duelist speed run and average 66,000 DP in 44 minutes over the 27 duelists in the game. And while this is basically foolproof, do keep in mind that there are certain situations in which Jowls of Dark Demise doesn't instantly win you the game, such as when Goblin King summons Dark Ruler Hades, or if White Magician Pikaru summons Toon Gemini Elf, or if the opponent has a Sand Gen in play. So be sure to keep that in mind, and remember to go for Jowgen over Jowls if you have a choice. I will actually upload that speedrun after I post this video in case you want to see how to play it efficiently. If you've seen my DP video on GX Duel Academy, you know you can infinitely loop limiter removal with the power of primal seed to gain an extremely high attack value allowing you to exploit the battle damage reward systems and end up with a pseudo infinite amount of money. While you can technically execute this loop in this game, the DP rewards for battle damage and max damage are capped at around 66,000 and max attack is capped at 130,000 meaning that you're only looking at around 4,000 to 5,000 at maximum for assembling a six card combo. I found this pretty disappointing and it made me a little salty, so I decided to check to see if there are any other reward caps that were put in place. Time to go to work. Since you gain DP for completing actions like playing spells or summoning monsters, if we can create infinite loops, then we can be rewarded for an infinite amount of actions. There are actually plenty of ways to do so, from Butterfly Dagger Elma and Gearfried the Iron Knight, to the aforementioned Primal Seed combo in order to play an infinite amount of spells. However, the most efficient way to do this type of farm is to unlock Copycat and give them a deck with at least two Spear Cretans, 
If there is one in the graveyard and another set face down on the field, then attacking into it will bring the other one back. And if you have a monster that can attack all of your opponent's creatures, such as Azora Priest, then you can infinitely attack into a wall of Spear Cretans and gain a sweet 80 DP per Spear Cretan destroyed in battle. Once everything is set up, it only takes 3 inputs and 10 seconds in order to beat down a Spear Cretan and bring the other one back, which means you're bringing home 480 DP per minute. That is 480 DPPM, which I'm not going to lie, is kind of rough. It's kind of a grind out there, just like it is in here for me at the library. Please subscribe to my channel so I can pay for internet and Game Boy Advance cartridges. Thanks. As it turns out, you can use this farm to get all the way up to the maximum amount your bank account can hold, which is 99,999,999 DP. Although to do so using this method would take about 1.2 million cycles of destroying Spear Cretans, which would take about 145 days or so. Really a small price to pay if you think about it. Oh, but you don't have to stop there. You can actually take it even further and keep going until you reach the maximum value that the dual rewards counter can produce, which is essentially equal to the maximum positive value that 32 bits can hold, which is equivalent to over 2.1 billion DP and requires about 27 million cycles of destroying Spear Cretan, which would take around eight and a half years. So hopefully the power doesn't go out and you could sit through the rewards counter, but you're going to be there for quite some time. So I definitely recommend skipping it. Oh, but make sure you stop there because if you do too many cycles of destroying your opponent's monsters, the battle rewards will either turn into a weird symbol, a period, an open parentheses, or just straight up disappear. And so yeah, we don't have a super broken farming method, but at least we got to point out more of Konami's mistakes. And really, what more could a person ask for? Anyways, if you like the farming breakdowns, be sure to leave a comment, and I will catch you all later, scrubs.